What is the last planner system and how does it fix problems with traditional construction project scheduling? Anybody who's worked on major construction projects can agree there's problems with traditional scheduling. Every single project I've worked on ends up having a huge master schedule with a thousand or more lines and never makes any sense. The only reason that you end up looking at it is because you need to update it. It just ends up being an administrative process and a tool that's used to manage the client. It never actually ends up being used as intended to help manage and coordinate the works and fundamentally deliver the project faster. It's too complicated in some areas and not detailed enough in others. It always contains a bunch of random activity linkages that never make sense and it becomes impossible to capture the actual way the project needs to be delivered. Am I saying that traditional critical path scheduling has no role in construction projects? Well, no, it has some very important uses and applications if done right, but we need a better way to manage the chaos and unpredictability of day-to-day -day working on a construction site, and that's the purpose of the last planner system. The key point here is that the people doing the works are the ones creating the schedules. They understand the work best, they know what's happening, they know how long things take. It's not people in the office planning the work for them and then being surprised that the plan they've created doesn't match what actually happens. So the last planner system is a collaborative short-term planning method that is designed to improve workflow reliability, reduce waste, and enhance coordination. Thing is, the people actually doing the work, referred to as the last planners, create realistic and achievable schedules, and they're the ones that are best placed to do this. So the last planner is basically collaborative planning in short cycles or iterations, and the work is planned by the ones actually executing it. So how does the last planner system work? Well, step one is to create a master project schedule, a last term plan. And this is the key role of critical path traditional project scheduling. High level schedule is developed, identifying the major project milestones and capturing how the project needs to be built. This serves as the roadmap, not necessarily set in stone because we understand that adjustments will be made. So for example, a building, you might have a 12 month schedule with key milestones like foundations, the structure, the fit out and the finishing. The next step is the phase planning, which is the medium term plan. So the work is broken down into project phases, typically four to six weeks long, and the team determines how different trades will coordinate a task. For example, in the structural phase, the concrete, steel, and MEP teams coordinate how they will all work together in the same space. This phase plan is then turned into a six week rolling look ahead schedule. It determines what needs to be done during the six weeks, what materials and equipment are required, what constraints must be resolved before work begins. So for example, before installing the drywall, the team ensures that HVAC, plumbing and electrical are, are completed. Then we get into the micro scheduling, which is the weekly work planning. So the trade, trade foreman meet weekly to commit to specific tasks and what they're going to finish. Only tasks that are ready to be done, scheduled, preventing wasted effort, planning for things that aren't going to happen. And the team identifies obstacles in advance and solve them before they cause delays. For example, plumbing team commits to installing pipes on two floors, ensuring materials and labor are available before they start work. Then in addition to the weekly work planning, the team has a daily coordination meeting to adjust for anything that's happened on site, whether it's rained, whether certain materials have been delayed or some other issues coming up and the problems are addressed immediately, reducing downtime. So for example, if the delivery is delayed, the team adjusts work sequences in real time to prevent wasted time. Then through this process, the team are measuring performance and continuously improving. So the teams track completed tasks, first planned tasks using the key performance metrics and the lessons learned from any miscommitments are used to improve the planning going forward. So this whole process works almost exactly like the scrum process where you have a four to six week look ahead in the duration, then you have a weekly work planning and then you have a daily huddle and at the end, you have a retrospective to improve the process going forward. So it works exactly like Agile. So when we're talking about the key metrics we use to work out how well the system works, the last planner uses a different series of metrics than traditional scheduling. The goal is to understand, not necessarily whether the whole project is on track or not, but how well are we planning? 
what is actually holding up the works and where do we need to improve? So it's actually about improving the scheduling process rather than answering the question, is the project on track? Traditional scheduling tracks whether the project is on track, but it doesn't explain why or why not the plan is working. So the first metric the last planner system uses, which I think is an incredibly interesting metric, is the percent plan complete. So it's a percentage of tasks where that are actually completed within a given period, whether this is weekly or daily. A high PPC indicates that the team is planning and executing well, while a low PPC, for whatever reason, suggests that the team is making unrealistic commitments. The calculation is incredibly simple. If you have 20 tasks planned for a week and only 15 were completed, the PPC is 75%. Now, if some of our planned tasks aren't getting completed, the next metric we can use is reason for planned failure. So we identify that for each of the delays, what is the specific reason why the planned tasks were not completed and it helps teams identify recurring problems like material delays, weather issues, or coordination gaps. Late materials is the most common reason for delays. Procurement processes need to be improved. So it basically helps us understand what's going wrong and what can we do to fix it. Now, if we remember the last planner system, you have your six week rolling look ahead and then you only plan the tasks that are ready, which means some percentage of tasks aren't going to be made ready on time. We also track the task made ready percentage, uh, TMRP. So it's a percentage of tasks that were made ready before execution, meaning all the constraints were removed, and it ensures the work can begin without interruption. For example, if only 60% of tasks were ready, the team needs to understand why this percentage is low and what is actually what constraints are preventing tasks from beginning. The next metric is the constraint log. So this is tracking issues with blocking work from starting. For example, missing excavation permits, safety clearances, or whatever. What is the constraint that is preventing the task from being ready? We can look at things like if 40% of the week's delays are due to missing approvals, then approvals is the problem we need to solve. The last metric is variability tracking. So how much task completion varies from the original plan. It identifies high risk areas where planning is unreliable. For example, if planned, this actual work fluctuates greatly, forecasting needs to be improved. The thing I love about these metrics and the thing I think is really interesting is traditional scheduling only answers the question of are we on track or are we not on track, which is an important question to answer. These metrics help us understand why tasks weren't being complete and they actually give the project team control to fix these problems. Just simply saying, is the project on track or is the project not on track? It doesn't help us actually understand what we can do about it. These metrics help us to answer those questions. Why does the last planner system work? And why does the evidence show that it actually helps us to finish projects faster? Well, it helps engage the field teams. The planning is done by the people who actually understand the work and what's involved. It increases workflow reliability. So tasks are only planned when they're ready, reducing delays and downtime. It improves trade coordination, the process forces communication between all the different trade partners. And because it's short and iterative, it rapidly adapts to real world conditions. Comparing the last planner system with traditional scheduling. So traditional scheduling, who does the planning? Well, it's the project managers and the schedulers and it all goes into the Gantt chart. The last planner system, it's done by the field team. The last planners, the people doing the work. The schedule in traditional scheduling is high level, long-term, Last planner systems, it's short term and detailed. Traditional scheduling is rigid. Last planner system is adaptable. Traditional scheduling is typically siloed, done on a computer in an office. The last planner system is collaborative on a whiteboard. And traditional scheduling is prone to delays when last planner system is set up to improve workflow reliability. Okay, so there was a detailed case study done on the last planner system on a real world major construction project, the Akron Children's Hospital in Ohio. It was a $200 million expansion and the goal of implementing the last planner system, as you can guess, was to improve efficiency, reduce cost and increase value, enhance patient experience. How did they implement lean construction and design? Well, through the design phase, they used stakeholder collaboration. So during design, they involved the builders, the architects, the contractors, the healthcare staff, the patients, and the families. All of them were involved in the design process. Once it came to construction, they used value stream mapping. So they identified waste and efficiencies, 
Then during construction, they use the last planner system for short iterative planning. They use just-in-time material delivery, and they also implemented retrospectives in continuous improvement to constantly get better at what they were doing. Now, whenever I hear results like this, I'm a little bit skeptical because the nature of construction projects is you can't do, it's not like marketing where you can do an A-B test and test two of the exact same things and work out which one that does better. So you have to be a little bit skeptical when you hear results by this, but the claimed results were $20 million cost savings by optimizing space and eliminating waste, reduced construction rework, improved workflow efficiency, and higher stakeholder engagement. But again, it all depends on the base case you're comparing these metrics again. However, say Safe to say there was some benefits achieved from the project. To summarize, traditional scheduling has some important shortfalls that are addressed by the last planner system, particularly through short range planning. Last planner system focuses on short iterations and the schedule is managed by the people doing the work and increases the accuracy and the usefulness of schedules.